My name is Satish Nagaraja. I'm a professor of civil and uh, mechanical engineering at uh, Rice University. I'm Enrique Barrera, professor in material science and nanoengineering here at Rice University. As you know, structures undergo stress strain because they are cycled through different loading cycles. If they're excessively strained, it, structures fail. So we want to monitor them. And that's the reason why strain sensing is very important. And in 2002, when we actually wrote the proposal to NASA, we actually wanted to come up with new nanomaterials which could be used for strain sensing. It was a gold mine in terms of being able to produce new material systems. And the key word there is multifunctional that would do more than one thing. And so these, this particular type of, of material drew me into this field and it created this opportunity for making a sensing material out of it. This uh, paper, when we wrote it, uh, we, had, we had thought of this long range vision, of, you know, 10 year vision where we wanted to see these materials used in uh, strain sensing. We were surprised at the tremendous impact it has had since its publication. It has been cited uh, a large number of times. And more importantly is many researchers have found that this is a very useful way of doing structural health monitoring uh, all the way from material level to the structure level where they can engineer materials from the nano level to do structural health monitoring, strain sensing and so on. And particularly for advanced uh, systems like the 787 which is an aircraft which is partly composite, partly uh, metal and so in those areas the structural health monitoring is becoming very important where the uh, system is built into the structure itself and that's where this is playing a major role and there are smart skin approaches which are being adopted and so uh, this certainly has you know opened up a new uh, area of research and uh, it has had significant impact. The way this came about was being able to use these nanotubes which are conducting, electrically conducting and then dispersing them into a matrix and then we realized, Dr. Nagaraj and myself, we could then apply this on either as a sensor, build it into the composite, put it on as a coating, and then as you strain the part, you're able to image the, the conditions of loading onto that part through this sensor. So when we started out, we actually started out with contact sensing. So this paper actually described strain sensing using four-point probes. We had to contact the surface of the material, which had the nanomaterials in, inside to actually probe for strain sensing. Now what we have come up with is actually non-contact strain sensing, where we can actually shoot a laser and interrogate the material at the atomic level without actually touching it, non-contact strain sensing. We've been able to look at the basic electrical properties that were introduced in this paper and be able to focus on those and continue to develop those to the highest levels of conductivity. So we've been making a continuous conductor that it, it embodies the idea of a, of a voltage and a current that we can actually then carry current and electrical power to and from a power source and to its, where its actual use. So we've developed a, a conductor from it that continues to be moving towards the best conductivity uh, that we'll probably see in a conductor, also lightweight, also one that doesn't change with temperature. 